quick word about Glenn Hoddle, uh, Mike, because we keep saying this must be the last chance for Hoddle, who really never quite has performed for England as well as he does for Tottenham. Let's just see this throw first. This is Gary Stevens. Oh, it goes the short one to Glenn Hoddle. Trying a long shot. That almost caught out Schumacher. And Berthold happy to get it away for the West Germans. Gary Stevens, what about Glenn Hoddle then? I think Glenn Hoddle's a great player, but uh, unfortunately, when he's been asked to play for England, he's always having to play on the right-hand side of the park. And he's not a player that can get forward and cause problems. I think his position is basically where uh, Butch Wilkins or Ray Wilkins plays. He had a great shot here. This just shows his ability. His, his shot. For Emmer again. Algon Tyler. Wanting somebody to show for him. Mateus is the man, and the shot, which is wide of Chilton's goal. It must have taken a slight deflection on the way. It's another corner to the West Germans. Brian, I've noticed that Argentiler is playing basically as their sweeper. We thought that, that Her Hergut would play there. Uh, it's quite interesting because both Hergut and Argentiler are players that are prepared to come forward, and of course there's just a couple of little problems early on. Well taken out by Dixon, but the ball running to the number six, Argentiler. Bremer, the fullback, just watch his shot, there it goes, it's a good one, and Shilton was struggling to keep it out. All three goalkeepers have told us here how the ball moves wickedly in the air, and I warned you about Bremer's shooting qualities, and we saw it there. Well, it's a throw which Kenny Sampson will take for England. And the extraordinary thing is that where most people thought we would have a lot of long-range shooting like this one from Bremer, we've seen very little of it. You can't tell from that angle how much it was moving. Bremer, Litvarski, and Reed quickly closing in on him, but he's slipped Peter Reed. This is Litvarski, and again Chilton called to make the save from Pierre Litvarski. Well, the Germans in the opening quarter of an hour have shown us more long-range shooting than anybody has in the fortnight or so we've been here. Into the middle of the park is picking them up. We don't seem to be able to get a man to pick them up at the moment. Butcher, the long ball, the sort of ball that Dixon likes if he can get to that byline. He crosses it in! And Lineker was almost in there and Schumacher was stretched to the limit and England get a corner. Good run there by Dixon. Really just the sort of ball he likes, and he thinks that Hoddle is the sort of man who can play it for him. Did well there, Kerry Dixon. Well taken by Waddle. Here in England again. Hoddle's gone away on the right. Waddle seeking to find him and does so. Crossed in again for Waddle. The flag stays down and Lineker's in there. And England close to getting on the score sheet again, but still nil-nil. 26 minutes gone. Just over the top. What about that one, Mike? It's been a great, it's been a great start for England. We've been so positive today, and not like the Mexico game where, it, where we seem to be a shambles. We've got far more shape. Glenn Hoddle was far more positive, and he's looking a very good player. Here he's had a great shot again. It's just a little bit lower, and it would have flew in. And now a break on for the West German. Matthias. Oh, and he's gone past Gary Stevens. Litvarski in a bit of space on the far side. Matthias is still there. Still with Litvarski, and the shot is saved by Shilton. And England really caught out there as the Germans made a move from one end of the field to the other. And for the third time in the game, Shilton has had a powerful shot to save. Bremer, the fullback. Ergert, the sweeper. Litvarski, the man with the shot. And just wide of the goal. They're certainly piling in their shots. There's no doubt about it. This is what we've got to be very careful of. On the break here, Hoddle lost, lost it from a corner, actually. And, and Litvowski here again gets half a chance to shoot. And I tell you, he's had a great shot and it's flew by the post again. They shoot on sight, these Germans. Dixon. Waddle. Reed. That's a good ball by Reed. And what a great run by Sanson. Lineker's gone towards the near post. And Robson is there! It's over the top. Great move by England. Reed and Sanson very much involved. A lovely run by Lineker. And Robson arriving late. 
just as he did, in fact, in a match against Italy, and over the top it went. It off this season with that damaged shoulder, and he said, although he felt he wasn't quite at his best for the cup final in the game in Finland, he feels really sharp now. Here's Hobble. A little chip in, and Robson was getting in there again, and knocked down, and a goal by Robson! Great piece of work by Kerry Dixon, and Brian Robson has put England into the lead. What a great goal that is. I'm delighted for Brian Robson, his, his attitude all week. And here the goal, like, and this is a typical Brian Robson goal, half a chance, he's got his toe to it, and it's flew in the corner of the net. He's such a competitor, I'd have him in my team if he was half fit. 34 minutes gone, Robson for England, after Kerry Dixon's fine work. Hoddle playing it in, Dixon chesting it down, the toe poke out, and Brian Robson answering any critics who say, well, it's not the Brian Robson of a few months ago. It's a nice one touched up here by the German, coming eventually to Herget. Brian Robson, Fairtold, Litvarski, getting it through, will Ron get there? Penalty given! The second penalty that England have conceded in this tournament. And Ron goes down, and with four minutes to go to half time, Mark Wright it was. As the ball comes through here, Mike Shannon. I don't think there's any doubt about it, Brian. It was definitely penalty. a penalty. I can't and argue with that. The one that was conceded against Italy was disgraceful from a refereeing point of view. This was legitimate. And the Germans now presented with an opportunity of bringing it back to 1-1 as they haul Uwe Rahn off the field. It's a, sh it's a shame, Brian, because he was running away from goal, actually, and I don't think he had any, any need to have a dive in at that time. But the only problems, apart from that, that the Germans have caused has been from long-range shots. Well, it's a full-back Bremer who's going to take it. Can Schilton hold out? Can England keep their lead? Will it be 1-1? Right on half-time. Bremer with the penalty. And Shilton has saved it! Magnificent by Peter Shilton! And England stay 1-0 in the lead. And he's he judged it right and got it to perfection, Peter Shilton. Litvarski with the corner for West Germans. That's the fourth successive penalty the West Germans have missed. And it enables England now to keep the lead. And after Peter Chilton, the goal that he conceded against the Italians was a little dodgy. But there was no doubt about that one. 1-0 one to England. As you can see, the 45 minutes are up. Half-time whistle. Brian Robson's goal, giving England a deserved lead. Glenn Hoddle looking outstanding, and England all together looking a much better proposition against the West Germans. We'll get the views of Ian and Jimmy with Jim Rosenthal as Bobby Robson goes off there. Half time then, it's England 1, West Germany 0. Sandy, thank you very much indeed. So let's get the first half view from the two chaps. Ian St John, surely much more encouraging for England. Well, to be fair, Jim, this tournament was dying on its feet, wasn't it? And uh, tonight's game has lifted it again. It's a, a good performance by England. And I'm enjoying the way that the Germans are playing as well. So, I mean, the, you know, even though they've, they've got a, a weaker team than they would have, they're still playing good football, so it's a nice little game. Yes, Jimmy, we were looking at the Germans. I mean, they've come straight off the plane, haven't yeah. they? You would expect England to dominate the game, but bearing in mind oh, no. what had gone before, has it surprised you a bit? Uh, what, the Germans? Well, now, how England have played? England have played very well, actually. I, I think the front line's done very well, considering they've uh, never played together before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Glenn Hoddle's having a good game midfield. He's spraying it about, and uh, all in all, England are, are looking good, although, as Ian says, so are the Germans. I right. mean, if Shilton hadn't been in form, uh, England could have been in a little bit of trouble because the, the Germans have been banging in some shots, mm -hmm. haven't they? Well, you talk about that. Little Litvarski, early on, got in a, a tremendous shot, which Peter Shilton did, did really well to, to, to get his right. body behind because the West Germans obviously come to Mexico and said, listen, sure. we're, we're going to have he a go did. from outside the area. Well, that, that's obviously the, the plan for the evening, you know, and uh, anything at all around... 20, 30, 40 yards even, you know, they're having a bash at goal. They hammered it, didn't they? <laughs> they, didn't they didn't but the good thing as well is that England have also, 
you know, cottoned on at last. Yes, yeah. And, and guys like Glenn Hoddle who yeah. can smack a ball of a says Mick Shannon so. says the German shoe on sight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least you know. Yes, he you know, because yeah, he was in the war. He was old enough. Yeah. Yes, he, he might live to regret that one. I don't <laughs> think Brian Robson will, will live to regret his goal though, because no. poor Brian, he's been having a bad time as we've been well, saying. Well, son of we? a great player though, Jim is that is a fellow who just gets in his Glenn Hoddle, and it's a, it's a great ball. England have been missing this. Um, just recently, but it's it's a lovely probing ball forward, a nice touchdown by Kerry Dixon, and there's Brian, gets his foot in, and it's beautifully tucked away, and I, I think that's a sign of a great player, because yes. he has missed two or three real dingers, hasn't he, yes. lately? Yeah. We must to, look but to keep going in there, you right. see, to keep going in and committing yourself. The sign, the sign of a very good professional. Peter Sounds Shilton. A great professional. Nobody, nobody questions Peter Shilton's sort of professionalism. And he, right at the end, saved England, really, when it looked as though it was going to be one all at well, half time. He saved the ball, With a yeah. really good save. Well, Greaves, he actually was given 2-1. He was. Shilton was going to save it, and that was a super save. Uh, you were very confident, Jim. I don't know why. I, why. Why were you so confident? I don't know. I just had that feeling. And, and funny enough, nobody in the studio took took the odds, <laughs> no. either because yeah. they agree with me or they're all yeah. too tight to have a bet. I don't know what, Jim. Good. OK, it's looking good for England at the moment. It is. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes' time. And if you're just joining us, England are a goal up against West Germany at halftime in the Aztec Stadium in Mexico City. The second half live still to come, but both teams still down in the cool of the dressing room. It gives us a chance, uh, Ian and Jimmy, to have a look at that uh, shot from Litbarski that we were talking about. A terrific effort from just outside the penalty area that uh, Peter Shilton did, did really well to get his body behind. He did. But, uh, you know, we, <coughs> we were saying that the Germans have obviously had that very much in mind. You know, and Beckenbauer has said anywhere you know, near that penalty area, let's have a pop at goal. Sure, that's right. he, he is a good little player, Litbarski, isn't he? Yes. Marvellous little player. Yes. And he's floating around all over the place. He's very hard to tie down. But, I mean, he, not only him, there was one or two have had shots. Would you expect, Jimmy, if the Germans are jet-lagged and are tired and haven't had the acclimatisation that England have had, would you expect England to overrun them in the second half? I don't know. Interesting theory, this, Jim. We were discussing it beforehand, wasn't we? Um, I think players that have been out there a while probably get to think about it about this rarefied air and uh, maybe it plays on their minds a bit the germans mm. having just arrived it's quite possible that they haven't given it a thought really yes. and uh, i think a lot of it is psychological and we'll just have to see whether the germans do flag or not yeah and you were also saying that there's not many people in that stadium it's taking not, up the air is well it? there isn't many look if they all <laughs> breathe in at once it will get a bit more rarefied though but um, <laughs> Yeah. Here comes the referee. We've got a good chance now to have another look at the England goal that I don't think we can see too often from a different oh, angle. Yeah. Well, Glenn, Glenn's passing, I think, has been terrific, and I'm delighted for him because he's the one player in England I think has got that type of ability. And there's Brian Robson, who, again, as, as a midfield player, attacking midfield player, is the best in the business. Hmm. And it's great to see him a minute after making a, a terrible boob. He's back in there and scoring a goal. And you'll yeah. notice that... England were onside there, Jimmy, because playing against the Germans, you're very rarely offside. Yes. You know, because the man, man for man mark, yeah. and you can drag them into okay. positions, and you can play balls in there and not be offside. Yeah. You know, which is interesting. Just another yeah. word on, on, on Glenn Hoddle. I mean, yeah. I think Brian Moore mentioned how the media yeah. put Hoddle under pressure, and time after time they say, this has got to be the game for him, this has got to be I, the game I, for him. He's I had a run, and looks to be benefiting, Jimmy. He's playing very well, but I think, you know, a player puts himself under pressure, really. Yes. He shouldn't listen to idiots like us or the press. It's down to him whether he plays well or not. Yes. And it's only the player that can do the business on the day. Nobody else, Jim. Yeah, but I think... Jim, he's been a scapegoat. I mean, he was taken off. If you go back to the Scotland game, I thought he was oh, the yeah. one player yeah. that England had that was looking dangerous, and they took him off. I think, you know, they've made him the scapegoat. Well, it's Klaus Algenthaler on the ball for them at the moment. They've got to push themselves through a pain barrier, and suddenly England are on the break again, and Butcher is on his way, and Kerry Dixon has got it in! And England are two in the lead. His first goal for England, Kerry Dixon, after 36 in a season for Chelsea, after a great break by Butcher, after a mistake by the Germans. Breathing space for England, and it really is beginning to look good. There was the mistake. Here's Butcher on the charge. Schumacher just holds him up, and Terry Dixon finishes it off. Delighted for Kerry Dixon there. That was a very good goal. Butcher's done great here. The Germans beginning to look tired, as I was just saying. He's tried to go around the keeper, and it's fell for Kerry Dixon, who's, who, who must be absolutely delighted to slot that one in. Well, now, 
There was the mistake as the Germans, while you're watching this, are on the attack. And Dixon finishing it off. Kerry Dixon. That's a good ball by Sanson for Robson. Played in the game towards Dixon, but he was well marked that time by Jakob. Now Mateo. Scott Mill making a break. And suddenly the Germans are in with a chance. Oh, and against the post. They were unlucky there. A tremendous break by Frank Neal. And England fortunate to escape. A big Bayern Munich defender. Taking an age to get this kick taken. Now Argenthaler with it. Through the wall and saved by Shilton. He's in really good form today. Struck beautifully. The wall was lined up well. And Shilton's handling secure. Having saved the substitution and, and, and with John Barnes coming on up front, there's a little bit of adjustment that had to go on. But here's Barnes in possession. Getting some support from Reed and a lovely little ball played by Peter Reed. Urging Barnes to get down that touchline. Find the cross into what Kerry Dixon! Oh, a beautiful goal! A genuine Dixon goal that Chelsea fans know so well from a pinpoint cross from John Barnes. What a glorious sight for England after Reed had played a lovely ball down the line. And there's big Kerry Dixon. England 3 0 in the lead. It was a great header on the far post. Typical Kerry Dixon goal. I'm delighted for him. He's had a great game and it's been a tremendous performance. I was just saying they're taking it easy. This is unbelievable, Brian. What a great way for Kerry Dixon to top off a magnificent season. Here come the West Germans again, though, with Hergert the substitute. Here's Hobel. Played on for Waddle. Touched on by Waddle beautifully. Dixon's in the middle waiting. Barnes is coming up fast. It could be John Barnes. Oh, and he couldn't get past Schumacher. And we were within an ace of getting the fourth. Oh, look at Bobby Robson. He wanted that fourth goal. And not such good news from Iceland for Scotland and Wales. Spain have now gone 2-1 into the lead. As Sanson plays it forward. And Robson's on the break. He's onside. Can it be the fourth? Schumacher's there again. And England get a corner. Nice picture. Look at that. Good spirit. That man, Brian Robson, is unbelievable. He's got three here. I think, I think Robson is hurt, though, while we look at that. It's a nil. Two by Kerry Dixon, one in the first half by Brian Robson. All very well. Sampson's right up there. Good position and a good ball played by Bracewell. Barnes waiting there. Gets the header in! Just wide! Another great opportunity to score and, and, and Barnes, he did well. He left the space and, it, and Kenny Sampson seen him whip the ball in near post and he just got in front of his man and was dead unlucky. Richard. Oh, and it's taken well. It's Vass on the far side with Meal waiting in the middle. And run! Just Vass. But they're still looking dangerous, Mike, aren't they? Well, they are. I mean, they're, they are a good side, Brian. You know, I think we're taking credit away from them. To here, they've got, they've got away. Kenny Sampson got caught from daydreaming a little bit. Lan should have scored on the far post. I'm glad it didn't go in because Peter Shilton's had a magnificent game. He's, everything, everything that's been held is stuck in his West German. Thus, the final whistle now is an offside flag. The final whistle now can only be a matter of seconds away. And there it is. England have won by three goals to nil, two by Kerry Dixon, one by Brian Robson, a magnificent penalty save by Peter Shilton in the first half, and an overall England performance that Bobby Robson and those of you at home can be proud of. We take a break, and after it, we'll get the views of Jimmy and Ian with Jim Rose. Well, really, what a good performance by England. England 3, West Germany nil the result, and Ian St. John, the fella everyone's talking about, is Kerry Dixon. Kerry Dixon, terrific, and, and nice to see him get the goals, Jim, and uh, 
Greaves and I were having a chat during the game and we were saying, well, he hasn't played, you know, particularly well throughout the game as it were. You know, you're not you're not saying what a great player, but he scored goals. And I mean, let's face it, Jimmy, you know, he scored them for his club, he scored them for England, so it may be that this is the type of player England need, you know, somebody who is lucky in front of goals. I mean, there, he had an open goal here, almost fell over the ball and then had it in off the post. And, you know, you say, oh, lucky, but he scores too many goals to, yes. to really well, be lucky. He's there, he's he had to give a lot of credit to Terry Butcher for that goal, yeah. but he was there, as you yeah. know, Jimmy, that's the important thing. The second goal, though, oh, that he there, scored, Jim. a classical header, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was, actually. It was uh, one of our few really good crosses by John Barnes and he got up brilliantly oh well above the defender and uh, that was a great header it really see, was see that's the type of ball that, that really they've got to get in for, for Hately when he yes. plays as well because yeah. he would probably score he had a hand well. in, the th in, the, in the first goal as yes, well he did. didn't he oh, oh, yeah. uh, he chested it down for Brian Robson right and had a he's bad had a old start <laughs> has he he's had a superb Terry? start Kerry Dixon Bobby Robson is going to be a very happy man over there in the Aztec Stadium as well. But both Kerry Dixon and Bobby Robson are now talking to Ken, Mirror, Ken Jones of the Sunday Mirror, I should say. First of all, it's Kerry. Kerry Dixon, a marvellous day for you. First full game for England, two goals. You must be feeling great. Over the moon, Ken. Don't know what to say, honestly. Dream come true for me. Um, Butch made a great done with magic for the first goal. Um, just on hand to tap it in, you know, it's just one of them things. Second one, Barnes, he's superb down the left. Got up on the far, knock it in. What you say? Very well done. Bobby, a good one for you. You needed that. Well, I think the players deserve it because we've worked very hard here. One or two people will begin to look for cracks, and there were never any cracks. It was just a case of confidence and keep at it and soldier on. And the team have played very well, I think. And um, wonderful start for him. Lovely debut. He did well on the second goal. The second goal, the first goal's a top in, but Brian Robson's. Uh, value to the side was significant in the early stages but overall it's been a good team performance and at the end of the day that's all I'm satisfied with. Thanks mate. Good. Bobby Robson, very satisfied. I would think that we, we should talk about Glenn Hoddle who made a massive contribution as well, Jimmy. Mm. Yes, he had a very good game. Excellent game. Probably the best game he's played for England since his debut at Wembley, I would say. He really commanded the situation. Very good. Now, Ian, when we look back on this tour to Mexico, what have been the pluses from England's point of view? Well, the pluses really, I think, all happened tonight because in the other yeah, two games, the Mexico game, you can forget. Uh, the Italian game, I don't think England played too well either. And uh, I thought the new man, uh, Lin uh, Lineker, was it, Mick Coleman? No, Lin <laughs> Len Aker. <laughs> Len Aker I played thought Len very Aker, well. For me, Trevor Francis has been built up in this trip and the two games he played by a lot of the media including our people as having had a good tour well i don't think so jim i think he's been a lot he's been very negative there's nothing really happened from him mm. he's looked good he's flattered nothing happened tonight at least the boys up in front made things he's happen going well, you know? I, I think um gary stevens who had his first cap out there has played three outstanding games but and peter reed and peter reed coming in you know yeah and, and so it, there's been a few pluses right been and a few would, minuses yes yeah. but you would say uh, finally jimmy that that kerry dixon is he in the team to stay? Well, uh, well, I don't know. It's a very difficult one. It gives Brian Robson a problem, doesn't it? Because he's got Mark Hately, who's the same type of player. Yes. But in Kerry's words, it's magic mustard and we're all over the moon. Over the moon. <laughs> gives Bobby Robson a little problem as well. <laughs> anyway, yeah. th thanks for your contributions tonight. Now, there's been that very important 